Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Tiger and Bunny Blue Rose figure. This is one of the harder ones to come by in the line. It's gonna cost you a few bucks if you wanna track one down, but it's a pretty cool looking figure, so if you're trying to complete this set, it may be worth it. The figure does have some really nice points and some things that aren't so great. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This figure stands just about 14 centimeters, which makes it roughly five and a half inches. And it's aesthetically pretty pleasing. They did a, a pretty good job with the paint. You can see there's a lot of line work going on around it and that's pretty nice. The uh, branding on it looks really good. They did a good job with that. Uh, and it does have some uniqueness to it in that there are translucent pieces. So this part down here is translucent greenish blue. Uh, the hat is translucent dark blue. And then the boobages have translucent greenish blue on top of them as well. Not that you can see through to the boobages, there's white behind it, but it's still translucent plastic on top of the white. And then these things back here are a nice clear plastic. So it's got a really nice shelf appeal. They did a pretty good job with that. Uh, we have quite a few accessories, so let's go ahead and get through those first. We have four different faces. We have two neutral faces, one with a little bit of attitude, I guess, and one that's definitely more neutral. We have one winking face, and then we have one face that's not winking and the mouth is open, kind of like she's blown a kiss or something like that. We have a bunch of different hands. We have two fist hands. We have two pointing finger hands, two gun holding hands, and then two relaxed hands. And then we do have her guns, but we have two different versions of the guns. One version where they are in the holsters, and that's all one molded piece for each gun. So that pegs right into her leg. And then if you want to use the guns that aren't molded into the holsters, you have those. And then you have holster pieces that will peg into her leg. The holsters would have just been too small, so they're not functional, so that's why they give you those interchangeable parts, so I do appreciate that. Uh, and then we do have her translucent blue display stand, which is the best color blue ever. It's just really nice. It's, it's super saturated and looks awesome. And I will point out, technically, these uh, little clear pieces that come on her back are technically accessories, but since they're part of her suit, they're not really accessories. You just have to kind of peg them in once you get the figure and then they're no longer accessories. So yeah, she's got a bunch of cool parts. I like that. And then mostly the figure looks really good. The only real downside to the aesthetics of this figure is that the head isn't well enough executed that the faces don't line up with the hair very well and it's kind of the wrong color. If you look at the sideburns on the face, they don't really line up with the hair and then the face doesn't fit onto the head quite right. So that's a bit of a bummer, but the, otherwise the paint job is pretty nice and it looks pretty good. As far as the articulation goes, the head doesn't have the best of range because we do have this collar that's going pretty high up on her neck, so you're not gonna get the best. These guys can pop off, so they won't break. They are very tiny. You see those little tips down there? They, they can possibly break, but they tend to pop out before they break, so that's kind of a good thing, but also kind of a nuisance if you keep bumping them while you're trying to pose the figure. So yeah, the head's not going to move very much at all. It can look down a little bit, rotate a little bit, and lean side to side just a little bit. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and pop this off and see what kind of articulation it actually is, functionally speaking. It's a ball hinge, so probably would have been a little better in this case with a ball peg, but you wouldn't have had good range with it either way, so... No big deal there. For the shoulders, your standard ball peg that connects it to the torso, although you get very little range out of that. Then you have your ball hinge, and the arms actually function very nicely. The way it tucks in right there is really well done. Full rotation, of course, and then that is gonna give you your bicep swivel if you want it there. You don't really need it there because you also get it down here in your elbow. One thing to point out, her joints are tiny, very, very tiny, so be extra careful when posing her because they could break very easily. You only get about 90 degrees out of that elbow, and then the wrists, again, very tiny ball hinges, so be super careful with that. do want to point out also they painted the, the fingernails on the gloves, which is how it's supposed to be. I mean, that's what it's supposed to look like, but they're very tiny, and that's a nice little detail, so I like that. Uh, for the torso, we have just a... It could be a double, but I think it's just a single ball peg, but it moves around very nicely. You get really good range out of it. You can lean her pretty far forward, pretty far back, though you do get some gapping. Side to side works really well, and then you have pretty much your full rotation, so that's awesome. For, these guys are on ball pegs back here, so they'll move around a little bit, but they're kind of just supposed to just supposed to dangle like that. For the hips, it's on... It's kind of like a Figma system where you have the upside down three-way ball peg, so these guys can move around like that. 
You can technically rotate them, but you don't really have much need for that. Then the crotch piece is just a floating piece, kind of. It's connected to the to the hips, but it moves with them. So it floats with them, I guess is a good way of putting it. And then you get very limited range out of the hips because you can see the, the socket just goes right into the hip rather than going, or the ball peg goes into the hip rather than into a socket. So it's pretty limited. Uh, not the best design. You do get a hinge though, so that's cool. So, I mean, it's helpful, but it's not because the legs still don't move around very well. So it's, it's a little bit of a bummer. She can't be put in the most dynamic of poses. The thigh swivel is also very limited due to that design, that basic socket in there. And then for the knee, we have just our single joint, which gives you better than 90 degrees. So that's okay. I like that. And then for the ankle, we have another little tiny ball hinge. Be extra careful with that but it is tiny, and her heels do not line up perfectly with her feet, but I haven't had too much trouble posing her and balancing her. So, yeah, it's not the best figure in the world, but it looks really nice. It's definitely a nice addition to the Tiger and Bunny collection. And, you know, it's, it's I, I guess the number of accessories and what is there is well enough done that it makes up for the few issues we have with the hips being limited and the neck being limited and the head not fitting together properly. I guess the rest of it makes up for it. It's kind of a kind of a personal judgment call. For me, completing the collection, it's worth it. For you, maybe not so much. Maybe she's the last one you pick up if you can find a good deal. I think that would be a fair a fair way to go about it. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for that. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And in the meantime, keep collecting.